What's up guys, Arash Rabar here, IFBB Pro over at Bev Francis Powerhouse Gym in Syosset. I'm currently 11 days out of Pittsburgh Pro, following that up two weeks later at the New York Pro in the new division, Classic Physique, which I'm very excited about. I'm going to train a little back for you guys today, I hope you enjoy it, going to try to keep it heavy and basic like the way I train all year round, try not to compromise much because we're close to the show. So we, we shot some back for you guys today, I'm 11 days out of Pittsburgh. Um, I like to keep my training pretty basic. I will do different intensity techniques like drop sets or force reps or whatever here and there at the end of my workout, but pretty much I, I keep uh, the intensity high, the weight as heavy as I can go for a given number of reps, like rep range of 8 to 12 for hypertrophy. I do this all year round. There'll be times where I'll do strength training 4 to 6 for a few weeks at a time to build the strength so I can apply it to higher volume. But I don't decrease weight on purpose because I'm in a prep. I won't do anything stupid. I won't try to throw around heavy weights and show off and hurt myself. And if I am weaker because of lower calories, so be it. But I'll always try to lift heavy. I believe we're in the weight room for one purpose, for one reason only, and that's to build muscle and build strength. If you're off season, you do less cardio and you eat more. If you're a pre-contest, you eat less and you do more cardio. But to, to sacrifice the weight to lower the weight and increase the volume and do higher reps because you think you're going to get leaner is a big 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 uh. mistake for one part what got you the size what got you the fullness denseness thick muscle is the heavy poundage is that way of training so when you stop that training the muscle is going to react it's going to it's going to look and feel different it's not going to be as full it's not going to be as dense it's not going to be as hard so you need to continue and train intensely i mean obviously if you're really tired from cardio and calories i don't expect you to be deadlifting 500 pounds but do your best don't just say oh i'm tired and and do 20 reps of something 20 reps is an endurance training a muscle that's that's trained for endurance and stamina is stringy and flat and long. So it's bad enough the calories are low and you're at a deficit and most probably in a catabolic state. You don't want to make it worse with an endurance training routine. I see a lot of guys do that. Yeah, you might be sweating, you might be burning more calories, but you're really, that's not the purpose of being in the gym. So if you guys watch the workout, it's, it's pretty, pretty basic, basic movements heavy poundage with full contraction and full range of motion. That's one thing I'm a big believer in. If you want that 3D muscle, if you want to look three-dimensional and pop out, you need to practice full range of motion. There's a lot of top pros out there that train a certain way, or they don't do full range of motion, or they do different techniques, and that's fine. They're exactly that, they're professionals. They've been doing this for two, three decades, and they've mastered their mind-muscle connection, and frankly, that's just the way that they're growing. And maybe they could be better if they did it differently, but you have a lot of newcomers, a lot of amateurs, a lot of young guys copying their techniques when they really shouldn't be. They should be doing full range of motion, they should be doing the basics. Um, so, you know, if you want a fully developed, symmetrical body, you need to pay attention to the contraction, the peak contraction, and the range of motion. So as you can see here, very unique close grip pull down machine at Beth Francis Powerhouse Gym in Sanasset. Various angles. It's different than the conventional close grip row that you do a belly button height. You can come down at a certain angle, so we're trying to target the mid upper back, which is a very hard part of the back to target because the lats and rear delts will always take over and get in the way. So this is an excellent machine, very hard to find though. Come over to Bev's and give it a try. We moved on to deadlifts, and deadlifts are pretty self-explanatory. You just got to keep the form good, especially when it's not in the beginning of your workout and you're a little bit fatigued. Um, I definitely like deadlifts. I think it's a great all-around movement. Sometimes I'll do them three-quarter, meaning I'll stand on a box or I'll, 
I'll have a, um, a platform where the, the ground technically is by my shin, so I'm not all the way down. I simply do that just to take the hamstrings out of the equation uh, and put more focus on the lower back and the erectors and just the back in general. Today we just did a regular deadlift uh, pretty much towards the end of the workout. Went up to, I think, 405. Uh, felt good, wasn't painful or exhausting. If you ever feel any pain or lower back pain or fatigue, just you know, cut it out for that day. There's no need to push and do it because you think you have to do deadlifts on back day. I don't do them every week. Sometimes I will, sometimes I don't. We moved on to a hammer strength row. Uh, I seat, I pull the seat up pretty high, so my wrist and palm comes to my lower lat because I'm trying to target my lower lats. If the seat is real low, my arm comes up high, I'm gonna use a lot of traps, rear delt, and upper back. So try to stay as strict as possible, get a nice foundation in there, grab, grab the bar or the grip with the other hand, and try to keep your chest as close to the pad as possible. I know when you're going heavy, you're gonna kinda lean off the pad. I'm sure I did a little bit too on the four plates but make sure you're getting that contraction. If the chest is coming way off the pad and the shoulder that you're, you're work, the side you're working on is coming back and not parallel to the other shoulder, you're most likely not even stimulating your back. You're just using a lot of your arm and momentum. So we left the lat pull downs for last today's workout. So since we have some lower back fatigue, we want to make sure we're not swinging and using momentum. So we're trying to stay as much upright as possible to utilize the lats and not use too much momentum and not be rowing the weight. So I hope we do this right. So I've been getting asked a lot of the questions about my prep and also about the difference in my prep, in my training, the transition from being a physique competitor to being a classic physique competitor. And first and foremost, I'm a bodybuilder at heart. That's who I am, that's what I am. I've been bodybuilding for 22 years. Um, I don't believe you need to be on stage oiled up to be a bodybuilder, but when you're training and eating for changes in body composition, that makes you a bodybuilder. So I had been training for 20 years before I ever stepped on stage, and when the time came, it just happened to be a very popular time for physique. And I was training at Beth Francis Powerhouse Gym in Syosset, and everybody was doing physique, so I took that route. Um, I didn't train any different, you know, I still had been training the old school hardcore style that I, that I learned from Ronnie Coleman, Dorian Yates, all the guys in the 90s. Um, and I continued with that, you know, it's just, uh, it, it, it's where my physique fit in. I wasn't 230, 240 to be bodybuilding. I was about 190, 195 pounds uh, conditioned. So I decided to do physique and uh, I did three shows. I did the Atlantic States in 2014, a few weeks later, Team Universe, and then turned pro a few weeks later in the North American Championships in 2014. And the year after, uh, this year, or two years after, they declared that they have a new division, Classic Physique, and it was like a dream come true. It was as if I was preparing for this, for this prep for 22 years unknowingly. It's, uh, it's where I want to be, and it's where I feel I fit in the most. Um, I love bodybuilding. I love men's open bodybuilding. I have a lot of respect for them, but you know, for me to make that jump at my height at 5'10", we're talking north of 250 pounds to get looked at, and that's just not for me. Uh, not what I'm going for. So I feel blessed, you know, for lack of a better word, 
that we were given this division, we're giving the chance to show our, our, our complete package, show our physique in a different light. And it's a very exciting time for the sport. I think that this sport came because of the demand, because of the popularity of the sport growing, which we've wanted for decades. And people want to see this. It's a more, um, you know, there's fans of, of physique, there's fans of men's open bodybuilding, and there's also fans of, of more of a classic look. You know, bodybuilding grows, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and not to, there's nothing wrong with that, but this is just a different look and a different division, and I definitely believe it's gonna grow. I think it's gonna grow, I think the athletes are gonna bring their best, and hopefully we get little increases in weight and we show them that we can bring nice, tight packages and that guys aren't gonna come on stage out of condition and sloppy, so. We'll do our best and we hope you guys support us and we'll all grow in the sport together. So for me, bodybuilding all started at an early, early age. Uh, seeing Sylvester Sloan, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Hulk Hogan, all these guys and, uh, and their physiques looking like superheroes in the G.I. Joes I used to play with. I was uh, immediately drawn to it. Um, I got into martial arts before I got into weightlifting at a very early age. And I remember I had collection of pictures of, of Arnold, vintage pictures of Arnold and Sylvester from, from the shoots of Rocky and, and Thor and Conan and all that stuff. And uh, from, from that age, about 10, 11 years old, I was just always drawn to that, that physique. And uh, I started playing with some, some weights at home. Some, I bought a preacher bar, got my parents to buy me some dumbbells, and I started messing around. And uh, at 13 years old, I was walking up to the high school gym and using their weight room. Got into football after that, and that was the end of that. I was training six days a week starting 14 years old, started learning about dieting, drinking a gallon of water a day, and it just evolved. I was hooked. Um, I wanted more and more and more and more. And here we are now, 22 years later. I'd like to thank Bev Francis and Steve Weinberger for letting us use their amazing facility today. Bev Francis Powerhouse Gym in Syosset. This is one badass gym, it's an East Coast Mecca. Uh, if you haven't been here before, you gotta come check it out. Not only is all the equipment excellent, you see machines here that you've never seen before. Steve collects a lot of old school machines. But also everybody here, competitor or not, is pretty serious about their training and it's just a good, positive energy in the air. Like I'm literally 15% stronger and train 15% harder when I'm in here. There's just something in the air here. Uh, so thanks again for letting us shoot here. And thanks again for being here for us, for, you know, great facility and training here. I'd like to give a special thanks to Jim Mannion and the IFBB Pro League for truly, truly blessing us with this division. Uh, we're more than happy, all the competitors and the fans, to have this new division. It's very, very exciting. I can't wait to step on stage in Classic Physique. Can't wait to see how it unfolds and grows. Um, we're, we're very lucky to have this division, so thank you very much for, for blessing us with this. I want to thank my coach, Chris Aceto. Uh, this is the first prep, first season I've been working with him. I can't speak highly enough about him. He's a great guy, super, super well-rounded coach, very educated. And, you know, he speaks for himself. You look him up and see who he's coached and how long he's been around. Uh, no, no mumbo jumbo, just real talk. And last but not least, my girlfriend, Juliana Malacarne. Uh, for helping me throughout the prep, putting up my shit, helping me cook chicken, uh, pushing me through the workouts and everything. Thank you. <laughs>